Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about my other favorite books from 2020. <laughs> So I made a whole entire video talking about my top 15 romance books that were my favorite in 2020. But today I'm going to be talking about 10 books that are not considered specifically in the romance genre. So we have one adult book in here and then we also have a bunch of young adult books in here. I thought I'd get started and let's talk about um, some other books that I really loved in 2020. First I have Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. This was a lovely ladies, lo lovely ladies live show pick for uh, one of the months in 2020. If you didn't know, I run a book club with my lovely friends, Jen and Ashley. I will link our live show that we have for this down below. Um, but this was one of our monthly picks and we discussed it in a live show and it was so much fun to talk about. We all really enjoyed it and thought it was super duper cute. So this is a young adult novel and our two main characters are Pepper and Jack and they are both in high school at the same high school. There's this app in their high school where they can, where students can anonymously talk to one another and they don't know who the other person is. And so Jack and Pepper have been talking anonymously to one another, not knowing that's the other person for a while now and they really have a huge crush on each other. But there's another dynamic in here because both of them are um, children to um, restaurant owners. Pepper is the daughter of the owner of a giant restaurant chain, kind of like McDonald's. And then Jack is the son of a really popular deli place in New York City. And so then one day the two restaurants get in a uh, Twitter war because <laughs> Jack's restaurant is claiming that the McDonald's big chain stole their grilled cheese recipe. And so Jack and Pepper are behind those Twitter accounts. So they are battling it out on Twitter. But they don't know the other person is the other person they're talking to on Twitter either. And then they don't really like each other in um, real life in high school. But there's a bunch of different things going on in this one. It was honestly just super cute. I really liked all of the social media aspects in there. Social media, I feel like in a book can really make or break the book as a whole. Um, it can overwhelm the book and I feel not great about it. Or it makes the book feel really interesting. So this one made it feel really interesting. I was very invested in like the funny tweets and everything. And the couple overall was really cute at the end of the day. And I really wanna read more of Emma Lord's books. Next I have Autobiography by Christina Lauren. I read this for my booktube friends Pick My TBR video, my first one that I did. Brie from In Love and Words picked this one for me. And this is a LGBTQIA plus uh, representation YA book. Our main character, I believe his name is Tanner, is bisexual I'm pretty sure and he decides to join this writing class in his high school for the last semester of senior year and the task for that class is to write a novel by the end of term. He meets the TA of this class who is the winner of last year's class so basically when you write a book you send it into this um, place I don't remember what place but you send it in and whoever wins and get, writes the best book that semester like actually gets it published. So his is in the process of being published and he goes back to this class to be like kind of like a mentor and help out the teacher for this class. He is very involved in his Mormon faith also and Tanner has a huge crush on him. And so it is a um, possible relationship between the two of them and our uh, other love interest trying to figure out how he can really like Tanner but also be Mormon. I really liked that aspect of it. I learned a lot about the Mormon faith. I don't I myself am a Christian, so I don't know anything about the Mormon faith at all. And I feel like I learned so much in this and it really opened my eyes to how unfortunately a bunch of people feel about the LGBTQIA plus community because I don't feel the same way. I feel like you should love whoever you love and God loves you no matter what. And so if God loves you no matter what, everyone else should love you no matter what. I, I go on a big rant about that in um, my <laughs> reading vlog for that. I'll link it down below. This one hit me in my feels and I really loved learning about everything and especially I loved learning about Tanner and his love interest. Then I have The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I read this earlier in the semester, basically at the beginning of quarantine because I was in last semester, um, a um, multicultural children's literature class and you had to pick up a young adult novel that had multicultural aspects in it. And so I picked up this one and it was beautiful. This book is also written in verse and I highly recommend the audiobook because Elizabeth Acevedo, the author, narrates it herself. I believe she narrates all of her books and it is fan-freaking-tastic. So this book is about a young woman, I can't remember her name at the moment, the book is not with me physically right now. This is about our main character woman and she has just 
starting to become a young woman. She's very interested in boys and wanting to know more about boys and she is uh, very conscious about her body looks right now and she's getting very much interested in slam poetry. I love slam poetry so much. Um, I grew up writing slam poetry and so um, I really loved that aspect of it and each like section of this book is a little poem or a little slam poetry and it is so good, so amazing. And this book is just about our main character woman trying to figure out all of those things when her mother does not approve whatsoever. Her mother is very involved in the Catholic church, I'm pretty sure, and she does not want her daughter having any affiliation with boys, wants her to be prim and proper, go to church every Sunday, believe in God. I really liked this book in the aspect of our narrator questioning what faith is in and of itself because I feel like a lot of people, their parents have a faith and then their parents expect you to follow that faith. And that's what the mother in here expected. I really liked how we got to explore somebody who is trying to understand what faith means. And I, I really liked that part of it. Um, being someone who's very invested in my own faith, I really liked watching that and figuring out um, how somebody feels when they're not necessarily totally invested in the same faith that their parents have and to question things because the human experience and the human brain questions so many things. And then there might also be a love interest that our narrator is kind of smitten with and I just wanted to read more. Also, I loved her brother in this, her brother. Her brother's side story was amazing as well. Overall, I feel like this is a great book and the ending of it was great. I really wish we got another book about her, but I don't think we're going to, unfortunately. Next, I have another Elizabeth Acevedo book we have with the fire on high. This one is about a main character named Imani and she loves to cook. She's also a young teen mother. She got pregnant her freshman year of high school and I believe this is her senior year. And so she has around a two year old, three year old daughter. And I loved that aspect in this book because we don't see a lot of young adult books where there are teen mothers who are perfectly fine with being a teen mother and love their kids. And it's not a story about a woman struggling to become a teen mom. Like, like I loved the aspect how it was just a normal teenage girl who just happened to have a wonderful, lovely little girl. And I loved the normalcy of it because there are people who have to go through that and the world isn't gonna end if they have a kid at 14. Yeah, it's very stressful to have a kid at 14, obviously, but there are people out there who just have normal lives that are young and have kids. And I really liked that aspect of this book because I don't read a lot of young adult books that have teen pregnancy in them or talked about, and that's not the main focus of the story. And that one was a very minuscule part of the story. So Imani decides to sign up for this cooking class at her high school for her senior year. And um, she learns a lot about cooking and a lot about how to listen to others and learn from others and to not be so stubborn. Learn about food, I love that. That so much and the love interest in here she meets in this cooking class he's new to their school and he is so respectful and nice and just a great great guy I think and I really recommend this one I also love her grandmother her grandmother is so funny she was raised by her grandmother and overall I really liked Elizabeth Acevedo's writing she is phenomenal next I have the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid I finally read this book everybody had read it but me by this point <laughs> Um, I read this book in uh, my book two friends Pikmin TBR. Um, my friend Jen, who is also part of the Lovely Ladies Book Club, um, picked this one for me. That's in the same video that I talked about autobiography. This one is about Evelyn Hugo, who is a Hollywood starlet, I believe. This book takes place in the 40s, maybe? I don't know, it takes place a while back. And this is about Evelyn Hugo trying to become a Hollywood starlet and um, her experience having seven husbands. This book was just an emotional roller coaster because everyone hates Evelyn Hugo and talks about how they hate Evelyn Hugo and I had no idea why and then I read this and I was like yeah I hate her but you can't help but become invested in her life and you can't believe that she's not a real person. There's two main characters in this book. There's Evelyn Hugo and then there's another main character. I'm forgetting her name at the moment. Um, again I don't have a physical copy on me at the moment. It is at my college. Our other main character woman who's not Evelyn Hugo, she one day receives a phone call telling her that Evelyn Hugo wants her to write her biography essentially. And so the story is about Evelyn Hugo telling the story of her life to this woman um, in hopes of writing a biography about her. And a little does she know, there might be a secret that Evelyn Hugo has. And that secret, I was not expecting it. 
<laughs> I feel like this book has a major plot twist that nobody really thinks about or nobody can really guess. I don't know if you guessed the plot twist, let me know. But I really liked the writing and how engaging this story was, even though I hated our main character. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, I found this book highly entertaining and I definitely want to read more of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books. Then we have If You Come Softly by Jacqueline Woodson. This book is so good. It made me sob like a baby, this book. It is like literally this thin. It is so short. I read it in one sitting. The audiobook, please pick that up because that is amazing, but also this beautiful cover is amazing as well. I mainly picked it up because of the cover and because Jacqueline Woodson was talked about in my multicultural children's literature class and I saw this book one day and had to buy it because I've heard great things about Jacqueline Woodson. So this book is a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in modern day, I believe maybe in like 2000 or it's in the 90s. I don't really remember, but it does not take place like before the year 2010. I know that. <laughs> is a Romeo and Juliet retelling where our our uh, male main character is a black boy and then our female main character is a Jewish white girl. And they end up going to the same school and becoming friends and then becoming more and them having to look around and see how other people view them and how they can live with that and deal with that and the inner workings of all of that and them just wanting to be together and society judging them for that. It was really, really good. If you want a short emotional gut punch of a book, please pick this one up. Literally the beginning message of it made me sob. Not even, not even the beginning of the book. There's a message that Jacqueline Woodson has at the beginning of this book that made me sob because the version that I have, I believe is the 25th anniversary edition or the 20th anniversary edition, either one, I don't remember. <laughs> but she talks about how this book has meant so much to other people and she had no idea that it would reach so many people. And I loved reading her story about that and reading how many people have come up to her thanking her that she wrote this story. It's just phenomenal and I really recommend it. Then we have Crescent City by Sarah J Mass. I know I said I only had one adult book on here, but I forgot there's actually two. So this is the second one. This is an adult fantasy book. Feels like it's an urban fantasy, but it's not because it takes place in a world that's kind of like ours, but it's very uh, fantasy-esque as well. Like there's magical creatures, there's angels, there's uh, wolf shifters, but they also have cars and cell phones and everything, but it's also not on earth. It's in a city called Crescent City. Also the book title is not Crescent City. That's the series title. The book itself is called House of Earth and Blood. <laughs> but I feel like a lot of people also say Crescent City on accident like I just did. So this book is about Bryce Quinlan and this book starts out with her being a total party girl, like total party girl. And then one night, something very tragic happens. I'm not gonna spoil it for you because I don't believe that part should have been in the summary. It's in the summary if you wanna read the summary. Um, but something tragic happens to her and they have to solve a mystery. She basically has to go help the um, basically like police force in this land who are run by angels um, help find out who did this um, horrible tragedy in their city. And so Hunt Athelar is an angel on this force and he is tasked to help her find the culprit for this mystery. And if he helps Bryce find this person, then he will be free from his servitude that he is in and you learn about the servitude he is in when you read the book and everything. There is there's a lot of aspects to this book, a lot of things going on. And there may or may not be a little bit of a romance between the two. There's a little bit, not enough for my like liking. I wanted more between them, um, but I feel like the next book is gonna be pretty steamy, hopefully. I think we learned that about Sarah, that she's gonna make book two pretty steamy. So I'm very excited about that. I really loved this fantasy book by Sarah J. Maas. I really liked how I learned about myself that I really like. Fantasy books have a little bit of a mystery aspect in it because I don't necessarily like contemporary mystery books. Like at all, I found them very boring, but this one was really fun. I think because we had the fantasy aspects put in there. I really enjoyed this one. I can't wait for the next books in the series to come out. Then I have Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. I honestly loved this book. I will tell you right now, I don't support um, Stephanie Meyer when it comes to the indigenous community, like at all. In her um, just mistreatment of them, I do not support that in any way, shape or form. 
I purely read this because Edward is one of my all-time book boyfriends and I am a total twihard. Now I know that a lot of people don't like this book because they think it's boring and it didn't add anything to the story. I disagree, but I'm also a total twihard. <laughs> I ended up picking up the audiobook and the physical book. My best friend and I wanted to read it at the same time because we're both twihards and so I went over to her house. I believe this was over the summer. She had the book on her phone, I had it physically and we're both reading it and we have the audiobook playing. So we're physically reading it and listening to it at the same time. And then Jake Abel, who is in the host movie, that movie is one of my favorites of all time. The book is even better. And I love that book so much. Jake Abel, who plays Ian in the movie, he is the narrator for um, Edward in this book. And it was so good. He did an amazing job and I loved it. And so I'll be listening to the audiobook all the time because I bought it off of Audible. Also, I didn't even say this, but this is Twilight Edward's perspective. <laughs> which I've been dying for for so long. I feel like so many people have been dying for this book as well. And I was so disheartened when the chapters were leaked and everything the first time around. And I'm so glad she got around to actually writing this book because I wanted it. I wanted it. <laughs> I overall loved learning about Edward and his story and his thoughts and feelings through all of this. Um, yeah, he can be a little psycho, but he's also a vampire. So in and of itself, he's already kind of a psycho, so. <laughs> Um, I just loved getting into his head and I really enjoyed reading this one. Then we have my two young adult favorites of the year. Um, the first one is Bone Cryer's Moon by Catherine Purdy. Now this is a young adult fantasy or urban fantasy, paranormal. I don't really know what to categorize it as. Basically, uh, this is about our main character girl. What is her name? I'm forgetting everybody's names. But okay, so we have three main characters in here. We have a girl, a guy, and then I know we have another girl named Sabine. I remember that. The girl and the guy that is the romantic part of this book and then sabine is uh this girl's best friend i can't remember her name i am so sorry um i didn't write their names before i started filming this <laughs> so our main character who is not sabine she, well both her and sabine are both um bone criers which are kind of like uh, witches who kind of like ferry people into the afterlife um, and to be able to get your bone crier burying powers you have to harvest the um, essence and bones of three animals and then you get the powers from those animals so our main character girl she has harvested three animals a shark a hawk and then something else she has so she has an amazing sense of smell because she is she killed a shark and she got the essence from a shark and then she can see really well because she has the eyes of a hawk once you kill three animals and get their powers you then have to do the final step of this process to be able to um, become a full-blown bone crier um is you have to go lure your soulmate and then kill him so our main character girl is ready to go kill her soulmate. Um, and then their main character is Sabine and she is her best friend. And um, she doesn't like killing creatures. She doesn't want to necessarily be a bone cryer. She doesn't like killing animals. Um, so she's trying to deal with that. But she is going with her best friend to help her on her journey of killing her true love. And so then our other main character who is a the boy, um, he has spent his life trying to hunt down and kill bone criers because when he was a little boy, he witnessed his father being lured and killed by one. And so it's been his life mission to find one and kill one to revenge his father. And so he may or may not be our main character's true love. I know there's a lot to unpack there. I didn't talk about character names. I am sorry, I don't remember them. <laughs> but I really loved this one. Sabine is one of my favorite characters of all time now. And she wasn't even in the romance part of this book, which is very rare for me to love a character who is not in a couple. I ultimately loved this and I can't wait for book two. Book two, this is the cover for it. Um, it's either, I think it's gonna be out soon or it's already out, I haven't looked it up yet. This cover is absolutely gorgeous and this has our two female leads on the cover and it is gorgeous, oh, so gorgeous. And I can't wait to read that one and learn more about them. And lastly, we have Sick Kids in Love by Hannah Moskowitz. This is a young adult book dealing with chronic illness. As someone who has a chronic illness myself, I saw myself so much in this book. It talks a lot about how people who are not sick treat people who who are. I really loved uh, feeling seen and heard and just relating to these characters so much. So our two main characters have a chronic illness and they meet one day at the hospital and they become friends and then they become something more 
even though our heroine does not want a relationship because she doesn't think that she should be in one because of um, her chronic illness and everything, but they can't help but really, really be attracted to one another and just become friends and something more. It is like such a good book. If you have a chronic illness, or if you wanna learn more about chronic illnesses, um, please pick up this book. It is so informative. I talked about this, I believe, in a reading vlog one time. I read this in a reading vlog of mine and just broke down by the end of it. So overall, this is probably the book that I recommend the most out of all of the ones on this list. So there you have it. Those were 10 of my other favorite books from 2020. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all. Thank mm -hmm. you.